Alright, so if you've gotten this far, hopefully you found the first three tutorials helpful. This is where we're really going to get the skeleton created for the root, and where you'll actually learn how to code in. So open up your root file, testroot.csv. You should have up to that highlighted portion coded already. The portion below in the width track section is what we will do right now. So the width track section pretty much defines everything relative to what's going to happen in the track area of the root, where objects and rows are going to be placed, where stations are, stuff like that. So you're going to need root viewer for this. That's right there. We'll open that up in a minute. But for now, I want to get you started by coding everything that I highlight right here. This is everything in the width track section where we start and the zero distance. So right here we have .sta cinnaminson. And so as you can see, what this represents is it represents a station. And so .sta means station. So that's the station name, cinnaminson. That is not the full station command. The full station command is very big. I will put the link to the generator for the station command in the description. Then we have dot height, and we have the height as 0.4 for now because we want the tracks to be 0.4 meters above the ground because otherwise the tracks just won't show up because of the way that the object is coded. Then we have dot back zero, which if we go back up to our width texture section, you can see our background zero is that pretty little picture of the mountains with them. Um, with clouds in the background. Then we have dot ground zero, which is in our width structure section. So the ground type zero is just a grassy ground. And then we have dot rail type zero zero. So what that means is the player's rail is always referred to as rail zero. And rail type zero zero means zero. The player's rail is rail type zero, which is pretty much that wooden track texture that we've been seeing. And then we have one negative seven zero zero rail. And so that pretty much represents that we're placing a rail negative 7 meters on the x-axis, 0 meters on the y-axis, and it's going to be type 0, which is the wood track texture. You've got to look on BD Station for more information so that you can be clear on everything. And then we have a very frequent command here, dot free obj. What this command is, is it pretty much just places down an object at the given distance. So we have free obj 0, semicolon 1, which means it's on rail zero, and it's free obj one, which is our left platform object. And so that pretty much means we're putting a platform next to the player's rail, a left side platform. So this free obj command right here, it's the full command with all the zeros and everything. Usually you'll just see me abbreviate it to three, to the first three parts, which is the rail index, the object index, and the x index for where it needs to go relative to the to the rail it's being placed on. And then at 49 we have dot stop 0550. When you're playing open BVE and that little bar comes up when you're close to stopping and you're trying to get as close to the middle of that bar as possible, what that pretty much means is you're trying to stop there. So it's dot stop 0550, stop within five meters, just code that in. And then we have below here we have dot rail one negative four. What that pretty much means is I'll open up root viewer to show you. What it pretty much means is that rail 1 is put negative 4 meters away or right next to the player rail. So if you've done everything right up to here, this is what you should have. You should have the station. You press E so that you can access events. You should have the station here. Then you should have the stop with the stop sign object here, stop here sign. So you should have that right there. Right. And then if you go a little bit further down, you should see dot rail one come a little bit closer to the player's rail. Yeah, right there it goes from negative seven to negative four. It should be a little bit closer now. And then, so yeah, you'll see that little crack right there. It's fine. Just don't worry about that for now. And then at 500, we have zero, two, zero, and one, two, zero. Those are objects. Remember, the first number is the rail index, the second number is the object index. So we're placing it on rail 0, and then the other one's being placed on rail 1. And we're placing down object number 2, which is the crossing, railroad crossing object. This is just something that changes the track texture so that it looks like a railroad crossing. So let's take a look at that in Root Viewer so that I can show you what it looks like. There it is right there. So we have the rail object right here. And then we also 
have dot rail end one zero zero zero. That means you're ending the rail at you're ending rail one, rail index one, at zero on the x-axis, which is the player's rail, zero on the y-axis, and you're ending it as rail type zero. And then at this distance, we have another crossing right here. Just right here, we have that nice little crossing object. Then we have another one, 1330, right here. Just the same little crossing. And then we have our second station, Riverton. So we have dot star Riverton, which is what we had before. And then we have the platform object that we put down for the first one. So let's take a look at that. And then we have 49 meters later, you're stopping, and we have the stop sign object. So let's take a look. So here's the station, platform on your left. And then we have the stop area with the stop object on the opposite side. Stop objects always, well, you can put them on either side. I put them on the right because that's what I'm used to. But you can put them on the left too if you want. Then we have another crossing right here, another crossing. And one more crossing. And then if we go a little bit further, we have Palmyra Station. So if you code that in, you should see the station and the left side platform again. So same station command as last time. Not the full command, but it's enough to get us by. Alright, and then we have the start command again. So let's take a look. That's where the stop is. You see the stop sign and everything. You got the platform on the left. Right there. And then let's go a little bit further here. We see a bunch of little crossings here. We have four crossings in a row, each a few hundred meters away from each other. That's one of them. It's right after the station, as you can see. It's just enough so that there's a little bit room outside of the station for it. This is all done to Google Maps specification. We have another crossing, another crossing. And we have our final crossing right here. That's our last one. And then we have dot rail one zero zero zero. And then we have dot rail one negative four zero zero. So if you want to get a rail to branch out from the player's rail, you have to start it at the player's rail, and then 25 meters later, wait later, you have to transform it to the distance where you want it at. So you start it at zero, then you transform it to negative four. Here we are, final station. And so if you look around here, you see we have platforms, that style command. We have platforms on either side, so we're using the same platforms as before. We're just placing them on different rails because now we have two platforms. So read those commands carefully, look at the platform objects that we're using, and just make sure that you understand the concept of placing it on a rail, and then placing it on the axis from that rail. So 110 means it's the left on rail 1, which is on the left, and the right on rail 0, which, has, which is on the right. Then we have our stop command again, stop sign. And that is about it for what we have to code. So if you coded all of this correctly, you should have what I have here in Loot Viewer. You have something that's ready to be used in OpenBV. We don't have any rolling stock that we can use for it right now, but we can work on that in the future. Maybe we'll even make a development series about developing the light rail vehicle for this project. We'll see what happens. All in all, you should have this. If you don't, please contact me, comment below, whatever you have to do. In the future videos, we will be fixing this up so that it looks nice and detailed. I would like to thank you once again for watching, and stay tuned.